The top stories tonight and why news? Metro Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Cavite and Laguna will revert to general community quarantine or GCQ status starting tomorrow until end of August. Commuters may expect more vehicles on the roads beginning tomorrow. The DOTR reminds the riding public no face mask, no face shield, no ride. While motorists may expect to still encounter checkpoints on your way to your destinations. The Philippine Coast Guard assures the public that COVID-19 testing for OFWs will continue even if the Philippine Red Cross decides to temporarily not accept field health patients. The Philippine Genome Center and the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM confirm the presence of a new COVID-19 variant detected in Quezon City. A Malaysian visitor in Thailand was found infected with COVID-19 after he returned home. Astronomers find what they call Milky Way's twin from a distance. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, August 18, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country. I'm Angelo Castro III. And I am Kat Dumaraos here in Bangkok, Thailand, bringing you what's grabbing the headlines in other parts of the globe. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, Metro Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Cavite and Laguna will revert to general community quarantine or GCQ starting tomorrow. That's what we heard the president announced last night. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosa Licoz, will join us tonight to tell us why live. Rosalie, why are we returning to GCQ? President Rodrigo Duterte approved the recommendation of the Interagency Task Force to ease the community quarantine restrictions in Metro Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Cavite, and Laguna starting tomorrow, August 19. From modified enhanced community quarantine, the 16 cities and one municipality in NCR and the four neighboring provinces will be under general community quarantine or GCQ until August 31, 2020. The government first placed several provinces under general community quarantine on August 16, such as Nueva Ecija, Batangas, Quezon, cities of Iloilo, Cebu, Lapu-Lapu, Mandawe, Talisay City, and the municipalities of Menglanilla and Consolacion in Cebu province. Meanwhile, major parts of the country are under MGCQ, which is more relaxed than GCQ. According to Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque, the Interagency Task Force will reconsider the recommendations of the Metro Manila mayors for a stricter general community quarantine in Metro Manila, including more coordination between the government and the business sector. Here's what Malacanang officials said on the matter. Now, offhand po, ang naging decision ng IATF was to GCQ, yung, yung recommendation was to go to GCQ, as we know it, no? pero this is without prejudice to the IATF reconsidering Siguro and taking into consideration the um, suggestion of the uh, Metro Manila mayors. Maganda po na nag-uusap po talaga yung, uh, yung uh, LGU, especially mga mayors at saka yung governors at uh, MNDA doon sa mga business sector para alam po lahat ang uh, gagawin po lahat kung mag-open up sila sa ganito, mag-anticipate po ang uh, mga mayors kung ano po mangyayari. So yun po ang gusto po nila na there is a harmonious relationship between the private sector and also the business sector and the LGU. 
Harleen, in GCQ areas, more industries are permitted to operate while sectors related to mass gatherings and kids' amusement are not allowed. Religious gatherings are limited to 10% capacity. Dine-in services limited to 30% capacity in restaurants are also allowed. Harleen? Uh, so, Rose, does the government intend to impose MECQ again in the future? Well, Harley National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer COVID-19 uh, Carlito Galvez says the government's way forward is not to uh, declare MECQ again because of its economic impact. Instead, the government wants to impose granular and localized lockdowns. Harleen? Thank you so much, Rosalie Cause, for that report. Commuters may expect more vehicles on the roads beginning tomorrow. While the DOTR reminds the ride in public, no face mask, no face shield, no ride. One of our senior correspondents, Joan Nano, details why. As Metro Manila and its four neighbor provinces return to GCQ, public transportation will resume starting tomorrow, August 19. MRT, LRT, Philippine National Railways, as well as passenger jeepneys, buses, taxis, UV Express, and transport network vehicle services are set to get back to their operations to serve the riding public. Also, domestic flights will be allowed in areas under GCQ. However, this will still depend on the quarantine restrictions being imposed in a certain province or locality where an airport is located. Several PV drivers are preparing their units, hoping they could drive their vehicles to earn a living for their families. Talagang nililinis po namin talaga yung bus para iwas po COVID. Hindi, natin mag, hindi tayo magkawahawaan sa mga pasahero. Nagpapasalamat po ako doon sa gobyerno natin at nakakabiyahid na rin kami sa awa ng Diyos. Hindi naman po kami magugutom kasi yung tagal-tagal na hong, ano, wala kami biyahe. Excited po kami na makabiyahe na bukas. Sana po tuloy-tuloy na po ito makabiyahe kami para hindi na po namin kailangan na mangingi sa kalsada. Meanwhile, the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Border LTFRB has added around 4,500 units of traditional jeeps and more than 600 UV Express units to ply on Metro Manila routes starting tomorrow. The complete list of new routes approved by the board is posted on the LTFRB's official Facebook account. Patuloy po tayo nagbubukas ng mga rota at makikita nyo na rin sa dami ng mga rota na nakalatag doon sa mga lugar o sa mga daanan kung saan na uh, yung mga tao ay frequently travel through. The Department of Transportation reminds the riding public on the mandatory wearing of full face shield when on public transportation. The DOTR reiterate they will strictly enforce the no face mask, no face shield, no ride policy on any PUV. Drivers and operators who will violate the policy will face sanctions or penalties, the LTFRB warns. Joan Nanu, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, four motorists expect to still encounter checkpoints on your way to your destinations. While the police expect biz business establishments to comply with the minimum health standards, even in areas under general community quarantine. Our police correspondent, Lea Ilagan, details why. The Philippine National Police will continue their strict implementation of checkpoint in several quarantine control points, even in areas under general community quarantine including Metro Manila. But Joint Task Force Coronavirus Shield Commander, Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliasar says it is at the discretion of the unit commander where to place a checkpoint except for those along the borders of every province and region. Kahit naman tayo nasa GCQ at MGCQ, hindi pa rin allowed ang uh, pag-cross ng border uh, unless merong travel authority. At yung travel authority naman, binibigyan lang yun kung emergency yung travel or locally stranded individual itong uh, magkakross ng border. So basically, ando sila para i-check pa rin yun. Mobile or random checkpoints on Metro Manila's major thoroughfares will also continue headed by the PNP Highway Patrol Group or PNP-HPG. Eliazar adds, under GCQ protocols, the police will continue to inspect establishments compliance with the minimum health standards. 
magdadagdag naman tayo o pwedeng lumipat yung ibang ating mga personnel doon sa mga lugar kung saan ito yung mga establishmento na dadagsain ng ating mga kababayan para masiguro natin na they will observe itong uh, physical distancing at pagsusuot ng face mask. Expect PNP personnel inspecting public transportation and workplaces too, where it is mandatory for the people to wear a face shield as mandated by the Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19. Ito ay mandatory lamang doon sa mga public transportation at pati na rin doon sa mga workplace. So sa ibang lugar, hindi mandatory, pero ini-encourage natin na magsuot sila. Eliasar adds the PNP will also assist local governments in their contact tracing efforts. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Personnel of the PNP Center for Police Strategy Management or CPSM took part today in a body language and nonverbal communication skills seminar. The event's objective is to help our police officers in their daily duties when mixing with the public so that people wouldn't misinterpret their body movement and gestures. According to PNP CPSM Director, Police Brigadier General Sterling Raimundo Blanco, policemen must learn basic body language and how to deal with other people. Itong ating mga kapulisan ay araw-araw na nasa labas uh, while uh, uh, conducting investigation, conducting uh, checkpoints and other uh, uh, frontline activities. So, kailangan po ito nilang uh, matutunan ang kanilang uh, uh, pakikito mo sa publiko and uh, how effective yung kanilang uh, serbisyo. General Blanco added that through the forum, they hope to be able to create policies that will benefit the entire police organization. Police personnel from other regional offices also participated in the seminar through a virtual conference. Meanwhile, Professor Gerald Abergos from the Station Advisory Council of the PNP Academy Sector underscores the importance of policy making in terms of apprehensions. Uh, my part here is uh, is to help the PNP develop policies pagdating sa apprehensions, pagdating sa uh, pagkatao ng mga police officers, especially yung training po na eh, hindi naman po gusto ng any police officer na sila ay mabidyuhan ng mali, ng pangit. Students in public schools across the country will mark day one of their school calendars on October 5, 2020. DepEd says it has made several adjustments in the entire school calendar, so education officials are asking for the students and parents joint action. Here's why from Dante Amento. The Department of Education issues a new school calendar for academic year 2020-2021, with October 5 being the first day of classes Students are expected to complete the entire school year on June 16, 2021. That is, instead of a last school day in April 2021, since the national government moved the school opening from original date August 24. The long holiday vacation will begin on December 20, 2020 and finish on January 3, 2021. That's a 15-day break. While the long holiday stays quiet, the same the summer vacation will change Actually, there will be no April to May vacation this time around. Uh, kami ay humihingi ng cooperation ng ating mga uh, magulang at saka sa ating mga, lalo na sa ating mga teachers at ang mga kabataan. Humihingi kami ng patawad sa kabataan, sa ating mga learners dahil uh, maantala yung kanilang edukasyon. The target is at least 200 school days based on DepEd school calendar. So education officials call on everyone's cooperation to satisfy the requirement of the law. Republic Act 11480, which President Rodrigo Duterte signed in July, amends Section 3 of RA 7797, also known as an act to lengthen the school calendar from 200 days to not more than 220 class days. 
the law allows the president upon the recommendation of the education secretary to set a different date for the start of the school year in the country in the event of a state of emergency or state of calamity. DepEd will ensure to maximize the entire school year and that no time, efforts, and resources would go to waste. DepEd's action includes what it calls focus of the curriculum and instruction. This comes after an error in one of the materials previously aired on DepEd TV. The reproduction and distribution of modules will be fast-tracked. DepEd will provide technical assistance to their field personnel to ensure a smooth execution of the learning continuity plan. Sinasabi natin uh, at sa team ko, uh, nag-uusap kami na uh, papaigtingin nga ang mga proseso at uh, magtatap din kami ng mga external um, experts para masilip talaga ito ng gusto. The school year 2020-2021 includes Saturdays according to Under Secretary San Antonio. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senator Ramon Bongrevilla Jr. has been rushed to the hospital, according to his wife, Bacoor City Cavite Mayor Lani Mercado. In a Facebook post, Mercado says the senator has developed pneumonia based on his recent X-ray result. She adds isolation in a regular facility is no longer ideal and hospital care is badly needed. Last week, Revilla confirmed that he tested positive for COVID-19. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that 4,836 new cases were reported today based on tests done by 84 out of 105 laboratories. That number raises the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to 169,213. The National Capital Region logged the most new cases with nearly 3,000 followed by Laguna with more than 300. There remains to be uh, 53,665 active cases, of which 91.5% are in mild condition. The total individuals tested in the country are more than 1.95 million. We have lost seven more patients, but through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 182 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total number of recoveries nationwide to 112,861. Thanks be to God. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of more than 21.9 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions, and sovereignty. That's after more than 180,000 new cases were reported in various countries. The fast-spreading disease has claimed over 774,000 lives while close to 4 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. Several restaurant owners in Metro Manila are starting to prepare for when customers arrive. Dante Amento tells us why. Starting tomorrow, restaurants with dine-in services in areas under GCQ may operate, but with limit and with strict compliance with the minimum health standards that's based on the new IATF guidelines. Thus, some restaurant owners and employees in Quezon City are busy preparing for the resumption of their dine-in accommodation. Annabel Reniedo, a restaurant owner, says they will operate with only a 30% dine-in capacity to make sure that physical distancing is strictly observed. Only customers are allowed to use the comfort room inside their establishment for safety reasons. They will impose a clean as you go or clay go policy on customers. Ginagawa din namin ngayon yung uh, uh, clean as you go. So binibigyan namin yung customer ng mga disposable plastic bags na sila yung mismo magtatapon ng mga pinagamitan nilang tissue, chopsticks, so yon. For 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 safety na rin ng mga employees namin. Meanwhile, Fe Kinaton, a restaurant manager, says they have made some adjustments in the dining area 
to comply with the physical distancing rules. Dati kasi mga 13 tables ang meron kami. So ngayon, konti na lang kasi dahil dun sa uh, social distancing, so kailangan konting ano lang. Kasi ayan yung mga table namin may harang. Aside from dine-in services in restaurants, some business establishments like barber shops, salons, internet cafes, and other personal grooming shops are now allowed to open. These businesses must operate with a limited capacity of up to 50%. The Department of Trade and Industry warns establishments will face penalties including fine and closure if they are found violating existing health protocols. Dantiamento UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Residents in the municipality of Pateros must take precautions and be sure to wear a face shield when going outdoors. Meanwhile, the Joint Task Force COVID Shield anticipates that the mandatory wearing of face shields in public places will be implemented in other parts of Metro Manila. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Since the ordinance for the mandatory wearing of face shield was implemented in the municipality of Pateros on August 4, authorities have apprehended 22 violators. The local government of Pateros is the first to require people to wear face shields aside from face masks in public places. This was strictly implemented following a pronouncement from the Department of Health that wearing a face mask and face shield while observing social distancing provides 99% protection against COVID-19. We feel na baka maging odorous din sa ating mga kababayan, masyado mabigat kung i-require natin lahat. Ano? Kaya lang recently ay nagkaroon nga ng uh, pronouncement si Presidente Rick Duterte to Secretary Roque na nire-recommend na rin nila yung paggamit ng face shield dahil nga malaking tulong talaga para maiwasan mo yung pagkakontract ng virus. According to Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliazar, commander of the Joint Task Force COVID Shield, they have also tightened the implementation of the mandatory wearing of face shield in public areas, especially on public transportation. Eliazar also expects other LGUs in Metro Manila to impose the same protocol. So, ako na niniwala na sa mga susunod na araw, eh, ang iba-iba mga LGUs maglalabas din ng kanilang mga undahansa. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, we can always deny entry or passage nitong mga uh, mga kababayan natin na walang face shield lalo na sa lugar kung saan kinakailangan na magsuot sila doon. Authorities further explain that it is not necessary to buy an expensive face shield. Instead, they may use improvised face shields out of recycled materials. There are do-it-yourself face shield videos online as guide on how to make an improvised face shield within just 10 seconds. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III attended the third Senate hearing via video conference on the allegations of corruption and irregularities in the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. During the hearing, Duque said he has zero tolerance to fraud and corruption. He also denied there had been a 154 billion peso loss due to fraud and overpayments. The Secretary also denied there is favoritism in releasing funds to hospitals under the controversial Interim Reimbursement Mechanism or IRM. However, the Secretary said they will make adjustments in the reimbursement scheme as he agreed with Senator Panfilo Lacson that there is an irregularity in releasing millions of funds to a dialysis center under the IRM even if it does not cater to COVID-19 patients. Yung sinasabi ng dialysis, hindi naman natin inaalis, natulungan din. Pero sa ibang programa, hindi po dito sa 0007 na IRM. Tama po ba yun? Uh, tama po kayo, uh, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we will rectify. Duque also denied the allegation of witness former PhilHealth anti-fraud legal officer attorney Thorson Montes Keith that he is the godfather of the PhilHealth mafia. According to Duque, the allegation is absolutely malicious and without basis. Meanwhile, Senator Lacson also warned PhilHealth officials, including PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales and PhilHealth Senior Vice President Renato Limshaco, that they will likely bait 
states in cases once they have submitted the report and supporting documents to Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara, who heads the task force investigating the state health insurer. The regional vice presidents of PhilHealth, who were earlier tagged as members of the Mindanao group that allegedly runs the mafia in the agency, also participated in the hearing. One of them is regional vice president Dennis Adre, who denied the allegation, saying they are the good mafia in PhilHealth. The real bad mafia, according to him, is the agency's executive committee, or the Exacom, who were also tagged by witnesses Attorney Keith and board member Alejandro Cabadin. If we are to be called mafia for questioning flood policies and illegal orders for exp exposing irregularities, then so be it. But we are the good mafia, and they are the real and bad mafia. PhilHealth President Morales and Executive Vice President and COO Arnel de Jesus were unable to attend the, the third Senate hearing, citing medical reasons. In his letter sent to the Senate Committee of the Whole, Morales said he is on medical leave starting yesterday, August 17, until August 28, as advised of his doctor due to his lymphoma. The Philippine Coast Guard assures the public that COVID-19 testing for OFWs will continue even if the Philippine Red Cross decides to temporarily refuse PhilHealth patients. One of our senior correspondents, Ray Pelayo, explains why. All expenses for the COVID-19 testing of arriving overseas Filipino workers are paid for by the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration or OWA. That means even if the Philippine Red Cross or PRC temporarily stops to accept PhilHealth patients due to the PhilHealth's balance amounting to more than 700 million pesos, the testing will not be interrupted. PCG records show that more than 145,000 OFWs have been processed for COVID-19 testing through the PRC. Ang maapektuhan lang siguro dito, kami mga PhilHealth members na Coast Guard, na mga frontliners na regularly nagpapaswab sa Philippine Red Cross. At hindi ito magiging problema pagdating doon sa trabaho namin sapagkat yun na nga, yung OWA po ang nagpipinance ng mga OFW. The Philippine Red Cross and PhilHealth entered a 900 million peso worth memorandum of agreement for a mobilization fund with an advance of 100 million pesos. The House of Representatives tackled the issue during the hearing yesterday. Kung talagang meron silang mobilization fund na 100 million, bakit nung mag-testing ang PNRC o ang Red Cross, bakit pinagbabayad pa yung mga kababayan nating tinetesting? Hindi ba maliwanag naman na bayad na yun? The PhilHealth will only pay for those uh, tests that falls under the DOH protocol. Uh, with uh, those people that are uh, covered under the expanded uh, targeted testing. So if uh, uh, a person does not fall in that particular category, they will have to pay uh, out of pocket. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. An increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines has been noticeable, as was reported by the World Health Organization Western Pacific Region. But according to WHO Western Pacific Region Director Dr. Takeshi Kasai, the country has prevented the overwhelming of health system capacity by implementing two-week quarantine restrictions or lockdowns. According to Dr. Kasai, the prevention efforts will be disregarded if the public does not take heed to call for healthy behaviors. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, has more details why. It's very important for government to continue to communicate to people, to encourage uh, them to maintain their healthy behavior. The World Health Organization is aware that the country has to ease restrictions to balance the economy and let people earn a living. According to WHO, the country has prevented the overwhelming of health system capacity by implementing two-week quarantine restrictions or lockdowns. But at the same time, I've been observing this uh, virus and these uh, interventions uh, making a significant economic uh, impact and then they affect the people's life, particularly 
those people are in a poor setting and families and individuals. And I heard that the people are saying that we need to go out for the work. I totally understand that. Cooperation, behavioral changes, and acceptance that Filipino culture should be changed is the call of 167 groups of medical societies amid the easing of anti-coronavirus restrictions. Filipinos should also accept living the new normal in all aspects as there is no cure yet for COVID-19. Pasensya na po kung makulit. Kailangan lang po talaga nating ulitin ang mensahe na sa panahon ito ng COVID, kailangan po natin ng pagbabago. We have to change our way of life in order to live and coexist with the virus. Pag nagsasama-sama na yung mga tao, during the moments na sila ay off, nakabreak, nagsasalo-salong kumain. No? So, um, I think this is a critical example of the kind of behavior change that we need. Meanwhile, Dr. Socorro Escalante, coordinator of the Essential Medicines Health Technologies of the WHO Western Pacific Region, says it's possible that Russia's Sputnik V could be made available by later this year. We have information that these vaccines might be available by October in the Philippines. However, we also continue to emphasize that accelerating vaccine research should be done following the steps to ensure that every step of the development will um, uh, contribute uh, to ensuring the safety and effectiveness of vaccines and that all um, candidate vaccines that are going into production should adhere to the standards of safety and uh, efficacy. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Genome Center and the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, or RITM, confirm the presence of a new COVID-19 variant detected in Quezon City. According to the Philippine Genome Center, although researchers say that the mutation is more infectious, meaning it has an increased viral rate of transmission, a more profound study is needed to identify the actual impact of the mutation. Also, according to the DOA, statement today, there is still no strong evidence that the disease caused by the G614 variant is more fatal or brings about more severe condition than the D614 variant of the new coronavirus. Now here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. The southwest monsoon, or the Habagat, will bring scattered rains in the western section of the country. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says this will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Ilocos region, Mimaropa, western Visayas, Zamboanga Peninsula, and the provinces of Zambales and Bataan. Meanwhile, Pagasa continues to monitor the low-pressure area outside the Philippine Area of Responsibility, located at 975 kilometers east of Hinatuan, Surigao del Sur. The trough of the LPA will cause cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over northern Mindanao, Caraga, Davao region, and the rest of Visayas. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to localized thunderstorms. Possible flash floods or land slides may occur during severe thunderstorms. No tropical cyclone advisory is issued. And our snappy news. Isabella City Mayor City Dalia Turabin Hataman says the local government has passed an anti-discrimination ordinance and calls on the public not to discriminate frontliners in the city. The House Committee on Disaster Resilience tackled today bills on rehabilitation and recovery of Marawi. Representative Carlos Zarate underscored that Task Force Bangun Marawi should also prioritize addressing the concerns on shelter and livelihood for internally displaced persons or IDP. 
All courts in areas under GCQ shall be physically open to court users, though courts may be also be reached through their hotlines beginning August 19 onwards. But night courts and Saturday courts remain suspended until further notice. And the Foreign Affairs Department launches an online exhibit featuring Philippine plants in the book Flora de Filipinas, authored by Francisco Manuel Blanco, a Spanish friar and botanist in the early 19th century. Malacanang assures there will be assistance for residents in Masbate and some parts of Visayas affected by today's earthquake. The magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake this morning caused damages to many structures in Masbate. It is not yet sure if President Rodrigo Duterte will visit the most affected residents. Pagdating po sa ayuda, wag po kayo mag-alala uh, mag yung mga pagkain, yung mga blankets, mga resettlement areas. Lahat po yan ay nakapreposition na po yan at sanay na sanay na po tayo na magbigay ng ganyan tulong sa ating mga kababayan. No? Siguradong sigurado po. Ako, na gusto ni Presidente Pumun. At siguro po, pero whether or not he will be allowed, tignan po natin. Meanwhile, Malacanang reassures the public on President Rodrigo Duterte's health. This is the response from the palace when several netizens observed the physical condition of the chief executive yesterday during his public address. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque also says the president is expected to return to Malacanang within the week. Mukha po siyang mas masigla at mukha po wala siyang uh, kahit anong iniinda sa kanyang katawan. No? So, um, ang, ang presidente nga po, animated siya, no? nagsasalita siya tungkol dun sa anti-drug campaign niya and he was also very inspiring when he needed to inspire the people. So, sa akin tingin po, bilang isang ordinarong mama niya, wala naman po iniinda ang ating pag the Supreme Court has ordered all courts under the general community quarantine to be physically open to court users. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. With the shift of national capital region and other provinces and cities back to the general community quarantine or GCQ, the Supreme Court has decided to physically open all courts to court users. Under Administrative Circular Number 45-2020, the Supreme Court and Bank and the Court's three division shall hold their sessions in court except under exceptional circumstances where sessions may be conducted through video conferencing with prior approval of the Justice. The offices of the Chief Justice and Associate Justices will be operating according to the discretion of the Chief Justice and Associate Justices. Other offices of the Supreme Court will be manned by a skeleton staff of not less than 50%. Meanwhile, the court will continue to receive inquiries on cases or transactions including requests for documents and services through their respective hotline numbers, email addresses, and Facebook account. The cases can be raffled either in court or electronically in court stations. All hearing of the Court of Appeals, San Diego Bayan, and Court of Tax Appeals shall be in court, except under exceptional circumstances. For regional trial courts, family courts, and first-level courts, all pleadings in both civil and criminal cases may still be filed electronically through the respective official email address. Hearings on criminal and civil cases on these courts will also be done in court except when a person deprived of liberty is involved or under exceptional circumstances. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Here in Thailand, Health officials are investigating a 46-year-old Malaysian visitor to Va Bangkok after being tested positive for coronavirus disease 2019 when he flew back to Malaysia on August 5. He was asymptomatic and the virus was not detected in his first test, but then returned positive after a second test on Saturday, August 15. Dr. Tanarak Pripat, Deputy Director General of the country's disease control department said that the man had spent most of his time at his condominium room in Bangkok during his stay in Thailand. According to Dr. Tanarak, there is no confirmation where the Malaysian caught the disease and his travel record is still unclear. Thailand has recorded no community transmissions of COVID-19 for the past 84 days. It now has a total of 3,381 cases with 3,198 patients already recovered. 
125 remain in hospitals for treatment and the death toll remains at 58. A South Lake Tahoe resident has tested positive for the plague, according to a statement which says that health officials in El Dorado County, California, have been notified by the California Department of Public Health. According to the CDC or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, plague is an infectious disease that affects rodents, certain other animals, and humans. It is caused by the Yersinia pestis bacteria. These bacteria are found in many areas of the world, including the United States. According to El Dorado County Public Health Officer Dr. Nancy Williams, it's important that individuals take precautions for themselves and their pets when outdoors, especially while walking, hiking, and or camping in areas where wild rodents are present. Human cases of plague are extremely rare but can be very serious. Several areas of South Lake Tahoe have signs posted to advise the public of the presence of plague and ways to prevent exposure. International students in Australia are more than struggling with the threat of the deadly coronavirus disease. To tell us why, one of our correspondents in Australia will tell us why live. Marvi? Yes, at least 60% of international students working and studying here in Australia are now homeless and going hungry due to the COVID-19 crisis, according to a nationwide survey. Despite having to pay an average of more than 30,000 Australian dollars or 100,000 pesos a year to study in Australia, international students have not been eligible for government benefit schemes during the COVID-19 crisis. This has prompted queues at restaurants and food banks for free meals. That's their plight now. And at the start of the pandemic, there were more than half a million international students in the country without access to job seeker and job keeper payments. Between March and May this year, the Union's New South Wales conducted a nationwide survey of more than 5,000 temporary visa holders. 67% of those were on a student visa. Survey data released just this Monday found that an alarming 60% of international student responders had lost their jobs, and 39% did not have enough income to, ba to cover for basic living expenses. The nationwide survey also revealed that 34% were already homeless or close to being evicted by their landlords because they could not afford to pay rent. 26% opted to share a bedroom to help reduce costs. And a worrying 46%, they were also forced to skip meals on a regular basis. Research results from another national survey of temporary migrants conducted by Unions New South Wales in collaboration with the University of Technology Sydney show that financial hardship among the cohort is likely to only worsen over the coming months, especially in the disaster-stricken state of Victoria, currently battling to contain its second wave of COVID-19 outbreaks. Kath? Marvi, what are international students, or perhaps they have unions, what are they doing about their present plight? Well, their situation has elicited calls for the Australian government to extend its job seeker and job keeper schemes to international student visa holders to follow countries like the UK, Canada, New Zealand and Ireland who have already done so with their wage subsidies. However, with the nation's current economic crisis, extending job seeker and job keeper to all temporary visa holders would cost an extra $20 billion over six months. But a union's New South Wales warns that without financial support from the government's welfare services, not only are international students being driven into poverty, What's more, the desperation to regain employment exposes the 500,000 international students into greater risk of exploitation. Also, wage theft has been part of the problem as temporary visa workers report more businesses to the Fair Work Ombudsman for paying rates below the minimum wage in the country. Kath? Marvi, what about the government? What's the government doing about this? 
Meanwhile, to help restart the international education sector pummeled by the coronavirus pandemic, Trade, Tourism and Investment Minister Simon Birmingham announced on Sunday the launch of a pilot program where up to 300 students from China, Japan, Hong Kong and Singapore will fly into the South Australian capital of Adelaide in early September. The first batch of students and their universities will pay for the cost of travel and quarantine and an Adelaide hotel, which can accommodate up to 1,000 people at any one time. The first flights in September are set to increase pressure on other states of Australia to follow as the university sector sheds thousands of jobs to manage the downturn in revenue. Kath? Thank you, Marvi, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Meanwhile, some refreshing news. Thailand topped the list of the safest destinations in the world to visit during the COVID-19 pandemic. A new study says this is due to Thailand's high international health regulation score of 85%, its moderate population density, and very low number of COVID-19 cases. Torlane, a Berlin-based travel startup, carried out a study on August 10 to determine safe holiday destinations amid the outbreak and assembled data and analyzed various metrics such as hours of sunshine per day for outdoor activities and the national 14-day notification rates of new COVID-19 cases published by the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. According to the study, the top 10 safest destinations across the world amid the coronavirus pandemic are Thailand, Jordan, French, Polynesia, Greece, Uruguay, Italy, Cambodia, Japan, Ireland, and Botswana. And more snappy news. United Nations Secretary... United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres closely following developments in Belarus after the UN resident coordinator called on the authorities to take immediate measures to prevent any instances of torture or other ill treatment in detention, including minors which have emerged after the elections on August 9th and following the release of a high number of detainees on the 9th of 13th August. Australian senators grill officials over the Ruby Princess cruise ship outbreak in March. Federal officials failed to speak to the doctor on board the ship. Gyms and fitness studios in the state of New York may open as early as August 24th with a 33% capacity limit, according to Governor Andrew Cuomo, but not yet in New York City. That Valley National Park in Eastern California was the hottest place on Earth on Sunday. It could even be the hottest temperature recorded in the world since 1913. And the NBA, following the attempt of Phoenix Suns, another team surprised its players with a powerful and proud introduction from family members. The Raptors' first five were forwards O.G. Anunobi and Pascal Shakam, guards Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry, and center Mark Gasol. Here's a sneak peek of that video. Let's take a look at their lovely family members. In Barcelona, number 33, my daddy, Mark Gasol. Mom, who's so long? At four, the metros are weak. From Cameroon, number 43, Pascal Siakam. Let's go, Raptors! Introducing the starting small forward from London, England, OG and Anobi. And guard from Raptor, Illinois, number 23, Fred Van Vliet. Yay! <laughs> they go, Daddy! But just before tip-off, 
at the, Di the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, Juno Award-winning Toronto singer Jesse Reyes performed a recorded version of O Canada while kneeling on the outdoor edge walk at the top of the 147-story building, 1,815 feet high CN Tower in downtown Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We stand on guard for thee. Well, the Raptors won that game against the Brooklyn Nets, 134 to 110. Interesting enough, astronomers find what they described as Milky Way's twin from a distance, although it cannot be seen by the naked eye. Jovic Bermas tells us why. Using the world's most powerful observatory, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array or ALMA, astronomers surprisingly discovered a galaxy that looks like our Milky Way. The light of this extremely faraway galaxy and therefore considered to be very young has taken more than 12 billion years to reach Earth, and we see it when the universe was just 10% of its current age. Named as SPT 0418 47, appearing as a ring of light in the sky is also surprisingly unchaotic, contrary to theories that all galaxies in the universe at its early stage were turbulent and unstable. While at the beginning of the study, astronomers thought this galaxy did not appear to have spiral arms, they found, however, that it has at least a rotating disk and a bulge, a large group of stars packed tightly around the galactic center, the typical features of our Milky Way. Since galaxies are extremely far, the research team used a nearby galaxy as a powerful magnifying glass, an effect known as gravitational lensing. This gravitational pull from the nearby galaxy distorts and bends the light from the distant galaxy, causing it to appear misshapen and magnified, which can be seen as a near-perfect ring of light. A new computer modeling technique was also used to reconstruct the distant galaxy's true shape and the motion of its gas from the ALMA data. Francesca Ritza, the research lead and a PhD student from the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in Germany says, This result represents a breakthrough in the field of galaxy formation, showing that the structures that we observe in nearby spiral galaxies and in our Milky Way were already in place 12 billion years ago. This new discovery, published in the journal Nature, gives a new insight into the development of our universe and challenges scientists' understanding of how galaxies are formed. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Those are the reasons behind the news, August 18, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Kat Dumaraos. I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know. We will always ask why. And I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.